Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome again. So tonight we we have two presenters. First of which is Lieutenant Colonel Michael Deeds. A little about him. Mr. Deans joined the JDF in February 2014 and currently serves as a senior legal advisor to the Chief of Defense Staff. He became a lawyer in December of 2001. He holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in history from the University of West Indies, a Bachelor of Law degree from the University of Liverpool, and a certificate in law education from the Norman Manley Law School. His diverse legal experience includes working in the Attorney General's Chamber, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Civil and Criminal Private Practice, and serving as a resident mag magistrate for 10 years. Additionally, Lieutenant Colonel Dean worked as an executive legal sorry, executive legal consultant at the Ministry of National Security, serves as a Justice of the Peace, and received the Medal of Honor for General Service in 2019. <coughs> Outside of his professional life, Lieutenant Colonel Dean enjoys outdoor activities, such as scuba diving, hunting, photography, off-roading, and spending time with his wife, Natalia, and, his, and their two children. His photography journey, which started in 2019, has become a cherished pastime. Welcoming as he shares with us his journey in the photographic arts. Thank you very much. Good Welcome. evening, everybody. Hey, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so, as I said at the outset, I'm not the most technologically advanced person. So I'm going to ask you all to bear with me as I attempt to share my screen. I went for a crash course with my tech guy from camp a while ago, so hopefully I'll get this right. Ah, look at that. <laughs> Looking good. All right. Okay. So are you able to see? Yes. yes. So I'm doing good so far then? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Um, As the president, <laughs> the president said a while ago, I started my serious journey on photography in 2019. Um, as an attorney, and an attorney with the JDF and the DPP in particular, I've driven literally through every corner or every parish in Jamaica. In the JDF, I've had the privilege of visiting areas that most of us don't get to see on a normal basis. I have. I've been to Homestead in St. Catherine. Um, then I'm town in the dead of night. All sorts of places. I've seen sandbags on the roof of Tivoli, in the high-rise buildings in Tivoli Gardens. And I, I always have my, where is it? Okay, I was just about saying I always have, couldn't, couldn't find it. I always have the camera that you have with you, my trusty telephone. And my beautiful wife, my muse, my inspiration, gave me a very special phone because it has an excellent camera on it. So that I, I'm able to take nice pictures wherever I am. I, <clears throat> when I got interested, I went to, Don, please help me. How do you pronounce it again? Sanya, Sanya Studios. Um, Sano. Sano Studios, and I did the introductory course with Don, which was a <laughs> tremendous experience. I learned so much in those few weeks that I spent there, and it inspired me to get started and keep moving along the journey. So the background picture you see here was on a trip to um, Italy. And my daughter, who has also take, caught on to the bug, snapped this picture of me with my camera. I'm rarely in any photos because I'm always the one taking the pictures. So I'm very proud of this one in particular. So I travel a lot for work. I always have my phone with me or one of my cameras. So whenever I see the opportunity to catch something that catches my eye, I stop and take it. So I'm sure everybody knows this spot. It's in White River, looking over um, from the bridge. Yes. We drove by. I said to my wife, I said, I have to stop and try and take this picture. I ran out, came across the road, leaned over, 
and snap the shot. It's one of my favorite pictures. I actually blew it up and put it up on my wall. Because we've gone so digital. Um, I don't know, I don't know if people print pictures anymore, but I, I go through every every month and I pick maybe three or four of my favorite ones. And I have an album that I print them and I put them in so I can see them. And then my really favorite ones, which are pretty much 90% of my wife, are blown up and put up on the wall in the house. So it was driving around across the island. I see all these interesting things, these beautiful sites, different locations that just inspires me to stop and snap pictures. Um, next. Wow. So here we are. <clears throat> I went to court in Bal not Balaclava. Yes, Balaclava, up in the hills of St. Elizabeth. And while we're on our way back, we this is I can't remember. I suspect it's the Black River because we're heading down from the Appleton towards Appleton Estate tour. And I saw this scene on the left hand side of the road. And my driver slash bodyguard who goes everywhere with me, he knows me. So I was like, Stuart, stop the car. Jump out, try and find my composition and get my picture. But, you know, I, some of the basics, I, I, I try my best to hold on as, as I can to, you know, or make sure that my leading line is there and this. But I'm going to be honest with you. If you're pretty, that's what let me take the picture is. <laughs> All right. And as a side note, I'm going to make a referral to you. Along this route in Magati, I believe, there's a lady who sells the most delicious curry chicken in a cotton tree. So you can't miss her. It's right across from a school on a hillside. If you're ever minded to take a drive down there, her curry chicken and white rice is well worth it. And the, fry, the fried fish isn't bad either. I, I, I should have taken a photo of her. I, I'm sure I did, but I couldn't find it. Um, the one to the right, same journey. We stopped for some peanut and coconut water. And while I'm sitting there, I saw the cars going by, and I had my trusty telephone with me, my Galaxy. I ran out, and I saw the truck in the background. I put it in manual mode. I tried my best to see if I could, you know, get the coconuts sharp and then the truck in the background. And again, I'm sorry, I don't know the technical terms offhand, but to me, it was a really nice picture. I like how the truck is framed by the banner, the... Bamboo. 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 You know, and I like the vibrant colors in it and stuff. I, as I said to you at the outset, um, just I don't think you. I've been into some of the most dangerous places in Jamaica. Don't bother me in the least. I put on my bulletproof vest. I take my rifle. I have my guard with me. I will go. Putting this PowerPoint together was probably the most terrifying thing I've done in a long time. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm absolutely not tech savvy. So, you know, anyway, so this is, that was, you know, I see beautiful things around me and I try and capture them. Um, 2019. I know my bio says two children. Yeah, I do have two children. Um, but before I get into that, again, my job that takes me to these very interesting places. The picture on my left if you look carefully, you can see that their soldiers actually standing up and their shadows are cast against the wall and whatever. Yeah. And an important part of what I do with the military, well, did actually, this is my last week. I retired and I've gone back into private legal practice now. But a very important part of what I did was to visit scenes where there have been shootings and very horrible, horrible things happen. I've seen some very terrible things that I wouldn't encourage most normal people to have to look at. Hence, this photography is something that takes me away from that world. Nonetheless, this picture on the left, if you look in the forefront, you see a small, what looks like a slip, I believe, just before my name. Yes. So, unfortunately, this was a shooting where a two-year-old was shot oh. in a shootout with some soldiers and gunmen, and the two gunmen were shot and killed as well. I take the photographs to assist me in preparing for our interviews with Indicom and the police. When I went back home and I downloaded them and I looked at it, I was like, wow, you know, this was really a tragic thing. But this picture moved me and it, 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 it spoke to me about my job and it captured everything that I did 
over the past 10 years with the JDF. So it means a lot to me to the point where I actually blew it up and um, had it on my wall in my office. And when I, when I was leaving, the staff asked me to leave this photograph with them to remind them of the things we have, we have done together as a group over the years. So yeah. There are two donors in my <laughs> presentation. That's one. Um, and I'll soon get to the other one. The next one to the right, we went to visit a location that we were thinking of using for a military outpost. So we're walking through this factory. And as we go around a corner, what do I see on the ground in front of me but a dead crow? Whoa. It's a junk crow. Yeah. And he was just laying in the middle of this building. God knows how long. He was petrified. Is the word petrified? He was there for a long, long time. It was not a fresh thing. And I saw it and I thought of uh, um, Edgar Allan Poe's Nevermore, The Crow. I got down on my, and I'm six, I'm six foot four. It takes a lot for me to go down on my knees. <laughs> so I got down on my knees and I tried to angle it up again. Um, again, I don't know the science of it, but I know that I could see that the corridor seems to be leading into a point at the back with light coming in and then the way the light hit the crow. And I, I could see... The picture in black and white. Obviously, even though I took it in color, I could see it in black and white when I took it again with my phone. So, you know, I try to make the most of my what I call adventures to get amazing photographs. Unfortunately, I never thought of it when I was in the helicopter and I'm, I got some really amazing views of the country. But else. Um, <clears throat> what got me really excited about taking pictures in 2018, my wife and I, she got pregnant. We got, we got pregnant and <laughs> we're having a little boy to the extent that I came up with a name. His name was, he had a very long name, <laughs> Roman Alexander Carlos Catanado Deans. I'm very wow. excited. I went and bought my, my Canon Rebel T6. I'm going to take a million pictures. Very, very excited. Um, went through the pregnancy and everything. However, unfortunately, Roman never stayed with us very long. He, um, he passed away a few days after he was born. It was a very, very, very devastating time for all of us, the entire family. And, um, you know, we went into a very dark place, but we found, you know, we, 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 held, we held on to each other, held on to our faith, and we worked through it. We worked through it. How did my camera save me? How did our camera save us? These are very... So during that time, I was home on leave from work, watched a lot of YouTube, and I started watching this guy on YouTube, Michael Sasser. He's a boudoir photographer. And I watched just hours and hours of my, I think I watched every single thing he ever presented. And hours and hours and hours. And in December of that year, so Roman was born in November, died in November, December, our friends took us to a hotel in Montego Bay. And these photographs are of my wife. This is her literally a month after giving birth. And I said to her, hey, I have an idea. Let's take some boudoir pictures. You're beautiful. You're still, I know you just had a baby. I know we've been through a lot, but you're still beautiful. You're as beautiful and sexy to me as you have always been. So we started at seven o'clock in the morning. And we shot photographs from seven in the morning until five o'clock in the evening. We never had breakfast. Oh. We didn't eat lunch. We didn't take any calls. And can I tell you, it was the most cathartic thing for both of us. It, it helped me in ways that I cannot explain how it just, it brought us closer together. It lifted our spirits. It did so much for us to the extent that, excuse me. <laughs> to the extent that it just motivated me to keep taking photographs, to keep taking pictures. And it and her as a woman, she said she felt, I wish, you know, she's she's at the function that I have to go and join her. So she's not here. But she said she saw herself as a woman again when she saw these pictures of herself and it made her feel so full and so good and whatever. So that's what inspired me. That's what motivated me. So, my muse, Natalia Diana Casado Dean, my wife. It's a little outer sequence, but this is one of the earliest photographs I took of her. This was even before the baby was born.
but I didn't. I took it at. Um, I'm sure we all recognize this place from um, Strawberry Hill. Mm -hmm. And she was standing on the thing, and it was just my little regular. I don't remember what type of phone it was. And I snapped the shot. There's very little editing done to this. And when I when I put it on my computer, I was like, "Wow, this is such a nice picture. Photography really seems to be something that's <laughs> interesting." And then a friend of mine said, "Boy, Michael, you have an eye. You can see things." So it was from this that has motivated after you know everything to come and do the course with you, Danny. So Natalia is my muse. I I keep very few friends on Facebook, Marie. I done it. You can attest. Um, so I share everything on Facebook. I like to share my pictures because the people on my thing are my friends. They're people that I know. So I don't care. I, I don't mind sharing my pictures. Mm -hmm. So progress. I watch a little more. Pictures get a little more risky, but I'm blessed. She's a very kind and giving wife who allows me to experiment and try new things photography-wise with her. So... Mm -hmm. As you can see to the sign to the left, we went to G Jam. I saw the stone box to the side. I said, Natalia, come now, give me a pose. Let me see if I can get something here. And this is what helps me to, so her participation is what allows me to shoot as much as I do and to keep shooting. So it's, it's, it's really an asset when you're able to utilize your family, your friends, and so forth. And between her and our friends, I've been able to get a lot of practice in. And I keep calling it practice because when Donut wrote me and asked me to do this, I'm like, me? Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> Just shoot for fun. Another yeah, but, <laughs> but nonetheless, because he's always daring, always willing to help. Um, this picture is blown up in our bedroom. I, it, you know, she's everything to me. And despite the fact that I'm obviously clearly very in love with her physical form, She's an amazing woman, an amazing mother, a great attorney, a great friend. So I, I'm very proud of her. I'm proud of her in every shape, as you can see here, and form, and rightfully so. <laughs> so I keep, I keep watching my YouTube videos. I, I live on YouTube. I, if, if um, I'm sure if the American government goes into my YouTube channel, they're going to think that I'm the weirdest terrorist in the world because it's photography, guns, off-road trucks, drone photography. That's that's all my entire YouTube complex um, thing is made up of. Um, I did this photograph of her, I think in August of last year. And I don't know, it, there's a vulnerability about it, the way she's looking off to the side. She's beautiful. She has her head to the side. And you know, a friend of mine actually said something once. I wish I could remember the exact quote he said. It's not that she's an honest human. She's obviously an attractive woman, but she doesn't act like an attractive woman and she doesn't force it upon you. And I think that's one of the things that captured me about her. She, she's effortlessly sexy, effortlessly beautiful. And that's what caught me and brought me into her. And that's what, she inspires me. She really does inspire me. And she doesn't care. Nobody knows, so I'm just, it's the truth of the matter. That's just how I feel about her. And she's who really motivates me to take a lot of the photographs that I do. Um, One of my favorite pictures, we were in Treasure Beach. This was perhaps a year or two after Roman died. And she was out sitting on a thing, having a moment, looking out over the, the um the sun well, towards the sunset out to the sea and i saw to me what was a perfect picture and i i captured this and it's actually i'm looking at it directly in front of me on the wall because I, this is one that i blew up and put on our wall at home um so here i have two of my great loves my wife and i love treasure beach my father took me there when i was seven years old and i have just i fallen in love with black river today but St. Elizabeth, Treasure Beach in particular, to the extent that having now opened my private practice, I go to Treasure Black River, I keep saying Treasure Beach, Black River or Santa Cruz, two to three times a week for court, Portland the other couple of days. So I'm actually just, I literally stepped through the door a few minutes ago, coming back from port in Portland. Wow. So, so two most beautiful places to me in Jamaica, Treasure Beach and Portland. I know there are two extreme types of, um, one is very arid and dry, 
the other one is green and lush, but I love both of them and I enjoy trekking through them. And when Donna sent me this, she said, you know, who are your, what inspires you? Um, you, Donna, Marie, I remember, I used to watch see your pictures when you go out and you take photographs of whether it's somewhere in St. Anne, Donna, the ones that you took are the, I call them the White Cliffs out in St. Thomas, okay. um, wherever. And I, I've been trying to experiment with landscape photography. I don't think I have the patience for it, but I'm wor I'm working on it, and I'm going to make some efforts to go down that route. And it's a lot easier to take pictures of still trees and mountains than finding persons who are willing to come and do portraits for you. It's very difficult to find persons who are willing to do portraits for you. So you guys motivate me a lot. Um, the photographs that you take, and I, 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 you know, I always pay attention to what you post, and I look to them for inspiration and motivation. Um, one of the difficulties I have, I'm always rushing to or from somewhere. So you see these beautiful things. So like on Friday when I was going to Portland, there are these amazing steps leading up into houses along the Junction Road. And it occurred to me, if you think about the roads, like the highways to Lucy, we've lost a lot of those types of structures because of the highway. They've been destroyed and put, you know, these horrible stone faces have been put up. So a lot of these things may disappear in short order. So I've made a promise to myself that I'm going to slow down on my next <laughs> trip back, because I'm always, I'm usually rushing to get to court. So on my next trip back from Port Antonio, I'm going to slow down and try and get some, I've been paying attention to the ones I think I want to stop and capture the composition and the right sort of pictures along the way. So you guys inspire me. Moving on. Hmm. Another one from that shoot. I handed her the camera to look at it and I just, I love how she looks. I said I take pictures of pretty things and it was a pretty picture to me. So this is actually our guest bedroom. So I got some flowers, some fake plants, put them in the bedroom. I painted the wall green deliberately so that I could use it as a backdrop. And every time I'm doing a shoot in there, I have to lift up the queen size bed, lean it up against the wall. Um, I have my little sheer curtains that I put up on the um, the window to give me the right type of light. I try to use natural light for these shoots as best as possible. But I went and got some flash. So I've been experimenting with flash photography, trying to learn flash photography. I watch um, photo me Ike and FJH photos and these people. And I'm always taking snapshots of their settings. And then I go and try and use the settings and see what I can get out of it. But you know what? I enjoy it so much. It, 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 it relaxes me. It brings a lot of joy to me. Um, I'm sure a lot of you here will be happy to hear this. To the extent that I, I'm not motivated to go hunting as much as I used to. I'd rather take pictures. Uh, <laughs> the birds are safe. Um, I am happy about that. I, 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 know you, I know you. I can't say I'm giving it up completely, but I, I think I'm getting close. I'm getting okay. close. I'm, I Sounds may start good. using the camera as opposed to the shotgun. But Sounds good. Step by step. Baby, baby step. Baby steps. Mm -hmm. But um, I love this one because hey, it has two things that I love. It has Natalia and it has my camera. So <laughs> you know, it, uh, it it brought me a lot of joy. Um, what keeps me shooting? Uh, capturing moments, making persons see themselves as unique and be beautiful, no matter the age or size. I have photographed a few persons. I didn't put any of the pictures here, but we have a friend, and she isn't necessarily what your conventional beauty model type person would be like. But what made me feel wonderful at the end of it was when she looked at her pictures. She was like, that's me? Oh, I look so, what, what, what? that's me? And it's not just her. I've, it has happened at least three or four times. And to see and get that reaction from people who, as I said, they may not be a conventional, beautiful person. And I get that reaction from them. That's, that's my absolute favorite. Thing to occur and I wish I actually wish and I think why and it's, it's really primarily women obviously and I wish more women would see things this way because I said after the baby you know Natalia looked like a woman who just had a baby she didn't feel like herself and stuff but then when she saw the photos and she had that reaction or friends who I did those photos of and they saw themselves and then they took them home to their husbands like whoa these are amazing you look so good da 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 I wish people would stop. Everybody who you ask always says the same thing. I don't take good pictures. 
Uh, that's not necessarily true. Anybody can take a, a good, anybody can be photographed in a way that's flattering to them. You know, it's up to the photographer to guide them and help them along the path to get their picture. So, I mean, I, get, I said to you earlier, I'm six foot four. I'm a big guy. I mean, Murray and Donnett have seen me and know, know what I look like. It's, <laughs> it's a hilarious thing to see me striking these poses to try and show the ladies how to do, how to make these poses, you know. But they enjoy it. And, you know, a lot of them have written me back and given me very nice compliments. I mean, I did a birthday shoot for a friend of mine last week and she wrote me back. And, but she wrote and said, oh, it was a wonderful experience for her and how gentle I was and guiding her and stuff. And it's always, people are always shocked to hear that account of who I am because those persons who know me, I don't smile a lot. I have a very imposing demeanor. So they're always shocked when they see this, this side of me. So this is what keeps me shooting. My friends, this young lady, Courtney, I'm very proud of these pictures. I am proud of them. I like how they came out. Courtney, about in 2019, Courtney allowed me to take some pictures of her at Hellshot. I mean, now that I look back at them, they really just look like snapshots. And then when we see these, and she's she was so same reaction from her. She's like, boy, Michael is me that I look like this, da -da 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 -da, and, you know. And we came up with our little concept. I searched up my house. I found these statues around the house. I bought those brambles that um Fontana or yeah, Fontana had the chair. I'm set up a little thing at my, my that's one of those small what do you call them again uh, the paper backdrops. It's very narrow. You can't move your elbows more than here. But this is my house <laughs> the space. But I have fun with it. And you know, we spent about three hours taking a whole series of photographs and she absolutely loves it and she loves them. And that makes me happy. And that makes me enjoy it. So that's what keeps me going. Again, this was the one on the left, the silhouette. They say I cut off her toe with your voice and chop her head at the top. <laughs> so I'm always, you know, I'm still having trouble with those. I mean, this was an early one, but she loves it to the point where she she blew it up and framed it in her house. Mm -hmm. You know, um, did the one on the right in the bathing suit out by the airport. There's nothing but garbage all around her. I had to take a rake with me and scrape up that little area just to get the shot. But these are the things that keep me shooting. Um, the genre that I, I enjoy is the boudoir, which is the one to the left. The lady to the left in the red. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The nurse that cared for my father in her little nurse uniform. She said she wanted to do a, a, a sexy shoot for her fiance for her birthday, for her birthday. And we sat and we did a whole series of shots. She wrote me back, said, boy, Michael, I never felt as beautiful as I did that day. And she, she again went and she blew up three other pictures, huge. And I guess she must have given them to the guy. I don't know, but she loved them. That's Castleton. Yeah. Beg your pardon? Where is that? Castleton? That's, that's some undisclosed location of the hills yeah. of St. Andrew. <laughs> not to be told. Secret. <laughs> yeah, right? And Natalie, I mean, I'm sure that you know Natalie Murray. Natalie, just, she was just a good sport. And I told her I, want, I had an idea that I wanted to try. And she came along with me and allowed me to, you know, experiment with my flash and take some shots. The sun had, there was a heavy cloud cover that day. So I was trying to, I was trying to measure the, I'm so sorry. I'm doing the presentation. I can't remember here. I'm telling everybody who put here and all of it. So, um, right. So she was, again, these people are so kind and giving of themselves to allow me to do this. And I really appreciate them. Every year I would do an appreciation post and tell them how much I appreciate and thank them for everything and allowing me to practice on them. Um, this young lady is a surfer. She's not just posing with a surfboard. She's actually a very accomplished surfer. And we did a whole series in the house. And then we cut road out to Bull Bay. This is out by Wikiwaki Beach to try and catch the sunset. But unfortunately, I did not. I don't know what happened, but it never it didn't work out the way I was hoping in terms of the sunset. But nonetheless, I really, the one with the surfboard is one of my favorites. I, I love it. Um, I have an idea about the Black Sand Beach that I've not been able to execute. But my my primary muse, my wife, has agreed that one day soon she's going to allow me to attempt to get that one done. Um, oh, <clears throat> this 
young lady now is actually a professional model. She was visiting Jamaica last week and a mutual friend introduced me to her and she agreed. She just she was very kind and she said, sure, let's go and take some pictures. So this is out in St. Thomas. And we went and we did some photographs. As you can see, um, and I think Donald and Marie may know this, I, I made a declaration that I'm making an attempt to learn how to take black and white photographs. So I'm trying to see the shadows. I actually set the um, camera to the black and white so I could see it on the, um, the screen at the back in black and white. So I'm, I'm trying to see it in black and white. So mm -hmm. I'm always looking for the patterns, the shadows and so forth. So this is, I set myself a new goal every year. Hence the scuba diving was one year, photography another year. I try to learn something new every year. So it's not that I'm claiming I've mastered photography in any stretch of the imagination, but I want to try and learn black and white photography and how to see things in black and white, see the patterns, see the shadows. So like I mentioned earlier, the um those steps that I see going through the junction, I can see the patterns in them. And then the gradation in the shadows from the leaves and the um the different color in the soil and the, the we call I think moss growing on it and so forth. So unfortunately Jamaica has also become extremely dangerous. So stopping and um Forgive me, I'm sorry, this is a matter of our work. John, I'm in the meeting. You, you're leaving now? All right, I'll call you. I'll call you as soon as I finish. Yeah, man. Sorry, that's a matter for court tomorrow. <laughs> Forgive me. Right, so I try and see the patterns as best I can and stop and take the pictures. But because things have become so sketchy on the roads, it's not the safest thing. So I worry about you a lot, Danny, when I see you out there taking those pictures. I hope you're not alone. <laughs> and me too, and me too, Michael. I'm and afraid to go out. And really afraid. Too. But we can't live in fear either. But nonetheless, this young lady, what I can say, working with her was a treat because she's a professional. She knew how to pose, she knew how to move, she didn't require too much direction. So this was an this was an amazing experience and lear learning experience for me to actually have the opportunity to work with someone of her ability, you know? And I wish, actually wish that more of our local persons were as accommodating and the word friendly as I want to use, or maybe I've just had bad experiences, but yeah, she it was a nice experience working with this young lady. Um, Just like this picture, that's why I posted it here. That, that, this, was one of, this was my favorite from the day. Nice. So this one, I've, this one I printed and blown up and framed to put up in the house. So I just really like it. I say I like pretty things and pretty pictures. So this one was a pretty one for me. <laughs> Lovely. Um, <clears throat> what something that I, I always try to mark it isn't the right word because I don't get paid to do these things. I do it for fun. Um, everybody that I've shown you so far, except for the model, these are all mothers and women in their 30s and 40s. And it shows that just because you're not an 18 or a 25 year old, it doesn't mean that you're, you can't be attractive, you can't take beautiful pictures, you can't, you understand? Mm -hmm. So this, this young lady has three daughters ranging from 16 to I think seven. And she was, she cried, she cried when she got the pictures. So. Nice. You know, sure. And again, this was my early attempts at my flash and my background and stuff. So, you know, I try not to, <laughs> try to learn and move on. My friend Wayne McGregor, I don't know if any of you know Wayne. He's a guitarist who plays in, I can't remember the name of the band. Black Zebra. Yeah. So Wayne and I did a shoot. This is actually in the middle of the day outside my apartment by the pool. So this is me trying to balance my ambient light and the flash and everything. But I thought the photograph gave a very rock and roll feel that Wayne, Wayne has and Wayne possesses. He has on the, the slash hat. I don't know how many of you remember slash from Guns N' Roses, but he has on the slash hat from Guns N' Roses, his favorite guitar, that dagger. I just bought it because I thought it would be a cool prop to have around. I was sword and um, some other things that I use from time to time. There's some pictures with Natalia, but those are a little too risque for me to put here. So <laughs> there's a story in her hand. But um, this, I thought this really captured Wayne's personality. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's one of my nice. favorites. 
that I've done yeah. with him. And he and I are going to do another shoot again. I have a concert that I want to try with him. So it's just for us to set up the date to go ahead and shoot. Um, <clears throat> it was, we're at a cafe in Paris. Had my trusty phone in my hand. I saw this guy walking. He, I don't know where his bike was, but he had on his helmet. And he was just walking across. And I'd like to tell you that I saw the pattern of the um, shutters in the background and stuff, but it just looked it just looked like a cool picture to me. That's why I took it, and I, I liked it, you know. And that's what that's what makes me shoot is I shoot what I like, and I liked how this looked, and I like how it came out. So it, it is one of my favorite pictures from that trip. Um, this one's a little dark, but it's the same thing. The way the motorbikes were laid up, and then the hoses in the background, different gradation in colors of the bikes and the seats and whatever, and then this one on the right. I don't know if you all, right after you come, you pass the St. Mary Banana Estate. Yeah. And you make that left to go to Robbins Bay. There's right. a beautiful, it's a proper word, grove of coconut, coconuts on the left, coconut trees. Right. Every single time I pass that place, I say, I want to stop and take a picture of it. I want to stop and take a picture of it. I have a friend who was in the American military and he got injured, so he's retired, whatever. So he has a lot of free time. And he enjoys going out and taking photographs. So while I've been on leave for four months from the JDF leading up to my departure. So during that time, he and I went driving all over the place, taking pictures and so forth. So we stopped. I had the company. I felt safe with somebody else there with me. Came out. We took some nice drone shots. We sent a drone flying through the trees. Took some photographs. And I have a, I'd love to do a shoot with a model in these things. I am, however, concerned that there might be grass lice and cow ticks in there, so I'm not so I'm not so sure anybody's going to be willing to do that. Michael, there was a time when they had we had a coconut disease. Yes. And all of those trees died. Yes, I remember. I was, that was probably like in the early eighties, not so. You remember? Okay. Yeah, man. I'm not as young as I look, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's... As a long as I, like, I probably tell people this is my fifty second year on earth. So. <laughs> Um, but this place is really beautiful and on my way back today again I don't know if again you know just before you make the right turn when you're heading towards Junction just before you make the right turn to go up to Richmond there's another grove of very tall coconut trees across from a chicken farm and let me tell you what I saw I, I don't know how it's because I was rushing to come back and I needed my friend to show me how to do the power the PowerPoint sharing I wanted to stop because the sun was, you know those hills with the black, those black rocks on the front of it when you're going through the junction? Yeah. The sun was coming through the clouds. You know those pictures that look like God reaching down to earth. The sun was just beaming through the clouds. And when you look through the grove, these tall coconut trees, the beams of light just hitting behind it, it was magnificent. I, I, I could kick myself on that. There are two things that I, I could kick myself on not stopping and taking the pictures. That one, one morning, going to work and right on the back of Jack's Hill here, somebody was burning some rubbish and the same thing. The sun was coming through the trees, hitting the smoke, the light, everything was perfect. And I, after I drove through it, I'm like, damn it, that will never be there ever again. That was a one moment thing. So I'd encourage everybody, when you see that moment, as long as it's safe, stop and take it. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop and take it's it. It's never going to come again, Michael. It, it will, will never come, come again. Not in the same feeling that you saw it as. Nope, it will never come again. So this is the same young lady. Again, I know I cut off her hands and stuff, but I really like the picture and I love how it came yes. out. Um nice. our friend, when we were in um so my muse and I go to the most romantic city in the world, Venice, and she comes down with the most horrible flu in the world. And he's sick for the entire time that we're there. So oh, she's yeah. laid up in bed. Our daughter, our friend and I go to the laundry and some very mundane things. I'm sitting there and I'm watching her. And then I saw I saw the reflection. I saw everything in there. I said, you know, it's a nice picture. Reach for my good old galaxy. Click, click. And I got <laughs> it. And I love it. It's, it Ruby yeah. is really one of my favorite photographs. And I have done quite a few boudoir shoots with Ruby. Again, not your conventional model shape. And she loves them. And her friends, when they see her in it, and it, they see her celebrating her body and everything, and they love them. I didn't put any of those up. But she's a wonderful friend, a good sport. 
And I just, I really love this picture. And, I, you know, anybody who knows the area would know the type of laundromat. This is, this is where you go and you pay your coins and you do your laundry and you leave it and you come back. And it brings back fond memories of our, of our time. Even though my wife was deathly ill, it brings back fond memories of our time there. Mm -hmm. Another good friend of ours, Melissa. Melissa is a conventionally beautiful girl. Very shy, very, you know, she's not going to take the kind of photographs that Natalia will let me take of her. But this was just a white shirt and a white men's shirt. And the pictures are very nice, most of them. But this one, I thought, just captured her shyness, her beauty. And I think the black and white represents it well. And she loves it too. So, Donald, I hope I'm doing what you asked me to do. You know? I mean, this is the best yes, I could come. You've done well. We're waiting for the other guys. Eight o'clock now. How far are you? No, I'm almost done, man. So, where I begin, my muse. Last set of shots to her. Did those the other day. Um, you know, she, she inspires me. And she makes me want to take millions of pictures. And I tell her all the time. She inspires me and makes me want to take millions of pictures. Whatever whatever shape she may be in, whatever age she may be, the soul of her makes me want to photograph her all the time. And I tell her all the time. So... That's my muse. That's my inspiration. We're at the beach. Um, I know I'd written a caption here. I can't see it because there's something blocking, but I think it said, keep shooting, keep soaring. I'm soaring, yes. Keep shooting yeah. and soaring. Shooting and soaring. This was just a lucky picture. This was a lucky picture. As a father launching his daughter out. And I was fortunate enough to be there to capture this lucky picture. Oh. And I, 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 I hope that I'll be able to keep shooting. I hope that I'll be able to keep learning and keep growing. Um, I don't have an end goal in sight. I just want to keep, I want to keep enjoying taking photographs. I want to keep enjoying making people happy. It's not, and by no means am I belittling persons who do it as their profession, because I know how technically difficult it is to do it as a professional. I, I truly don't have the discipline to do it how a professional would do it, the, the hours that it requires to conceptualize and um, edit and those sorts of things. <laughs> the very minor edit side I primarily do on my phone with Snapseed. So, you know, but I, I really, I, I enjoy it so much. I enjoy sharing it with my friends on my Facebook and my Instagram. I enjoy making the people feel, persons feel happy. And that's what motivates me. That's what keeps me going. And that's why I enjoy photography. Donet, I thank you again and again. That class I did with you helped so much. I keep trying to go to the, they keep putting on, promising the middle, the, the um, intermediate. The intermediate, and then it keeps getting canceled. So I've just not been able to go back. So I've just remained at the University of YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Oops. That's my presentation. Is there any questions? <laughs> I don't know what I'd be able to answer, but. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, I first. I I really want to say, Michael. I think you are such a romantic. I I've been watching your work on on Facebook, and I I just remember like when you started the day one thing, and then you move into photographing your wife, and then the color pictures are now changing into black and white, and you're understanding tonal values. Mr. say, hold on a second. This brother is growing. So, and this is why I asked you, I wanted, you know, the younger members in the club to see what it means to put together just a body of work, to create a series. You see, you got centered around your wife and you explored her in color. You explored the different poses. You explored the lighting. And, and then you got into the mood. You know, that last black and white picture you showed with her lying back and it's just white, blacks and grays. That's a mood shot. That's a professional shot. That is a serious photograph. Thank you. Not a lot of people going to see that. So you you have, you've inspired me too. It's, it's just like I go on to Facebook and I want to see if Michael put up something. <laughs> you have... You have grown, you have grown, you have grown, you have grown. I enjoy the poses and I I also enjoy the freedom that you're getting from exploring your wife. And she's also, it is therapy for you and for her, you know. It is, it is. So it is working. 
and you are achieving. You are excelling. You're doing well. Congratulations. Thank you, you so did well. Thank Good. You so well, Michael, I must say that you inspire me. I haven't been posting a lot because I've been really busy at work. But, um, you know, I like how you take pictures. You don't just take every picture you see. It has to reach your heart. It has to reach your soul or else you're not going to press that shuttle right? You pick up the things that um, attract your mood, attract the sort of person that you are. And it does come out in your photos, you know, because when I look at your photos, I feel them. I not only see them, but I feel as if I am right there, you know? So, so that is what amazes me with a photograph, that either you look at it and your heart going to say, oh my God, look at that picture. Or you're going to say something reminds you of it, of your past, or it's going to make you shed a tear. Something in it inspires me because you are the type of person that you are very profound and you're not going to take a picture on this. It, it, um, it kind of means something to you or you see some beauty in it. You know, and I really appreciate that because we have a lot of people who claim to be photographers that just go out and take, 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 take their picture, right? And not one of them reach a soul, you know, but I should call you the soulful photographer. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Thank you so much. So that means like, a lot. Thank you. Thank you very really, much. Really, really like that. And you're going to improve as you go on because practice makes perfect. So, you know, just keep on doing what you're doing. And as I'm done, it says, you inspire us. We inspire you and we get some inspiration from everybody. Everybody's here on this planet to help others, you know, and to inspire others. And we all have to work with this concept that, you know, we are each other's keeper. We learn from everybody we meet. We even learn from animals. You know, I'm a big animal person, you know, bad, bad, right? So so <laughs> when you see something that an animal lab does, I have six dogs, right? And it's Royal Caribbean Terriers. And um, you learn so much from them. You just go outside with them and play with them and you see how they interact, right? So you want to be able to interact like how those dogs feel. You know, it's amazing what you can learn from animals. And I see it in all your pictures. And thank you so much for coming tonight. I know you are thank extremely you. happy. But um, thanks for the time. Your muse is waiting on you. You have a court day tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so we really appreciate your time tonight, Michael. It was my pleasure. And thank you all. And, you know, I, I look forward to seeing and sharing more with all of you. And you know what I'll ask and I pray? I hope we can get back to the in-person meetings. Yes, we're trying to do that. That, that. that would be good. That would be really, really nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe we to. can have it at a, a garden or somewhere where it's in the open and you know people are not as concerned and so forth. That's a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Right. And if you know anybody that needs a good lawyer. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much for your presentation, Dean. My um, pleasure. It was well received. Um, Thank you all. And I'm sorry that I have to run, but I have a prior commitment. So I'm, I'm sorry I won't catch the second presentation. So good night, everybody. And we've been touching. Keep shooting. Night, night. Night, night. Thank if you. I said keep shooting, not shooting. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. All right. Take all right. care. Night, night. Okay, our second presenter has joined us, Sir Marvin Barclay. I think we are you ready, Marvin? Can we just roll right? Yes, into yes, your... yes, I am. I am. Uh, no problem. Uh, Bring up your intro. In the spotlight, in the spotlight me? Yes, hold is on. It, is that a spotlight situation or is it like if you talk like it goes uh, goes full screen? Oh, there it is. Yes, Thank you. 
by the way, I'm sorry I just got, got, got an opportunity to join you guys, but uh, so the same thing, I just realized uh, Michael had to leave. I know I'm just coming on because I just finished that. So that's why I look like this. I didn't dress like this for <laughs> I wouldn't have. It's a, it's a little weird. It's a, it's a little weird. Like that's too serious a presentation too. <laughs> the high, the high end the photographer. Sorry, say that again. The high end photographer. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. But, um, but uh, I, I, well, first of all, um, uh, Donnet, I know Donnet reached out to me, um, and trust me, as long as Donnet reached out to me, I'm, 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 I'm game. And the reason why, because um, like I heard you said something, Marie, um, you were saying um, that we all inspire each other, and you know, and, and so forth. it's uh, donnet has been like one of the biggest inspiration for me um, during college because she taught me um, like the basics of photography. And, uh, and a lot of advanced things as well. Some of the foundational stuff I've learned. So even though I'm gonna show you some things that have nothing really to do with like, like it's connected um, like, like by spirit. It's just not because black and white photography is happening primarily. And um, of course I've gone in a whole room where I'm doing a lot of digital manipulation and all that kind of stuff. So um, it, it's, uh, I will say like Dan, it's like biggest inspiration ever. And she also taught me one thing and I always share this all the time. And I, so I dive right in. Now that you taught me something most people never taught me, and that's hustle. You have to hustle. You have to put work in. And I've seen her work like crazy year over year, just, just pushing, just getting stuff done. And uh, yeah, I have that same spirit. So heads up. All right. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So done it. You told me that you wanted me to, to share on um, just like just just progress and so forth. So what what I'll do, I like I'm a visual, I like I'm a visual learner. So I like showing stuff as well. Um, and I have a, a, a pretty, um, I, I like this setup. So I'm just go ahead and share this with you. So uh, actually, by the way, um, I had to put this together over the last two days because I've no, I've not organized um, anything I've had in like forever. So I actually went ahead and built a website just to, just, just to showcase, like it kind of makes sense, right? So mm -hmm. did that real quick. So hopefully you'll like some of the things I'm gonna show you. But um, heads up before I, I dive in, um, I, I don't have like the, it was hard to find what I used to, like what works used to look like for me. Um, so I have to just kind of talk you through. But, but um, started off with black and white photography, right? With, with Donnet Zakas. I'm going to share my screen with you in a sec. Um, started off with black and white photography with, with, with Donnet. Um, gosh, how long was that again? Donnet? That was like, I think I took an interest in 2004. And, the last uh, year of, of that room. Oh, that was it. That was, yeah, it never lasted. <laughs> uh, that, that, uh, but that was fun. That was amazing because we were tactile and I missed that, by the way. That was, that was just, I, I wish I could go back to that. Um, so, so learned a lot there, learned to manipulate there. But one of the things I, I, I've always had a, a knack for that's Photoshop. I've been using Photoshop since 1999. And so, um, and so what I started doing was, 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 um, was when, when I realized that, uh, you know, I could add the images to Photoshop. I would scan the stuff I would take and throw them into Photoshop and then manipulate and just do, do fun stuff, you know, with limited tools that they had. And so over time, I developed a skill set that I could like, like layer images over and over. Um, uh, 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 but I'm, I'm going to show you some of the earlier works from hopefully. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So I'm going uh, um, to show you some of the only earlier works. I don't know what's up. By the way, what can I show, Donnet? I don't know. What can I show, um, Duane? What you have? You have a folder with stuff. Well, I don't know. I like, I, like my, my fine artwork that's in the National Gallery, is that fine? Yeah. Oh, good. I don't okay. know. Like some... No, there shouldn't be any restriction. Say that again? No restriction. no restriction. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you now. So this is what happened when I started doing that. So I did things like these. I mean, it's kind of weird because I wouldn't do that now. I'm gonna be honest with you. It was what it was then. It was it was me experimenting. This was no major like you know like sometimes I said, what's the idea behind it? I can't look at you and tell you that I was just a young student just trying to find a way to 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 to. It's almost like everybody when you're a, when you're a young student, you you try to push towards um, having this like shock value. Um, and that's really what it was like looking back that's all about shock value but this is what we're talking about like having that manipulation like you see things like so it wasn't very clean but for most people it looked good and I, and, I, and i'm always a believer that if you if you pair 
if your peer, um, what you're doing, uh, I'll show you. If your peer, if your peer, um, the, the, these digital manipulations with physical reality, that's one of the things I've done a lot too, is I build sets, I paint people. So the same things I used to have to do with darkroom photography, because it can't be done after the fact. Yes, to some degree, it's just harder. I, I did it, bef I, I, so I, I would still integrate that. I believe that if you want something to look a particular way, don't just rely solely on manipulation in, in, in Photoshop. It doesn't read the same. That's why, by the way, heads up, I know you guys more than likely, I've had conversations about um, AI um, doing photography and whatever it is. And believe me, I used to think that was a threat. It's not, it's really not a threat. It's not, it's a, it's a the, 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 here's why. Um, here's why I said that, because, um, because, uh, there, there's, 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 there's just some things that it can't do that we can like, there is a tactile nature to this, that if you ever saw one of these prints in person, because I actually, I burned foam, like all of what, all this space you're looking at here is burnt foam. Um, and then I would photograph the subjects against that same burnt foam. So they have the same coloration and, uh, and then add them in at scale, like scale them down, that kind of stuff. So that's what I would have done. But there's a lot of, of practical um, uh, effects or practical um, workings that, that's happening here. And it's the same thing here, but this is like earlier works. And so you can see the transition. And then I did that. You'll still see how they're kind of they're kind of rough. Um, maybe, maybe it doesn't look rough to you, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So like when I put subjects in, so this is one of the works I've had as well. Let me tap on this and see if it goes full screen. Maybe I shouldn't have. Oh, there it is. All right. So this is one of those works as well. You can. Give me one second, guys. This this thing. Okay. One second. Let me just go back here. Yeah. You can tell, like the subjects aren't put in properly, but for me that was like a big deal then. You know, um, like they don't even mesh. Even though they're shot against the same material, it doesn't blend together. So you can tell, like these are earlier works, but then. Um, same thing, earlier works, doesn't mesh very well, but it still has an, a, 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 like a painterly um, essence to it because of the tactile nature. I think somebody's um, microphones, uh, I think that's Angela, that's yours. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, so, so you look at it. So for me, what I did mostly back then, because I didn't have as much skill set, I still worked with like, just like, I, I still tried to make you feel something from the image itself. So again, earlier works. Um, uh, where, where, by the way, heads up, where, wherever I, 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 I lack the ability to, to make um, to like get um, to, to make details work, I just blur stuff out in Photoshop. And so that's what I used to do, not anymore. You know, I just blur things out because I don't want you to see like, like how poorly the feet was done and all these kind of stuff. So it just looks good from a distance, but let, let's, um, so again, older stuff as well. So I'm gonna move move along now, all right? Older things. This is when it started getting a little bit better. So this is after college. This is after college now, when I started putting things together, when I started doing things at a much bigger scale. Um, wait, let me, I shouldn't have done it, yeah. At much bigger scale now where I'm building like, so this actual throne that, they, that they, the person's on is a, it's, as, it's as big as it is in, in real life. So it's that big and built the platforms and all those kind of stuff. I remember Stefan helped me with that one. Um, some things are not to scale. So you, of course, because a manipulation, you can do fun stuff like some things can be big to scale because you don't have a choice because somebody has to sit, sit in it. But then these columns, they're as big as probably this because I made them by hand with clay and put like gold foil over it and all these kind of stuff and made my, and, you know, made my columns and you know, use my foam, burnt foam that I use and just just create stuff. So that's so it's a combination of um, many different things, large size, um, just lots of practical effects along with digital effects. Um, and just and all these subjects, photographs and editing, like some of these are the same people, again, still had some rudimentary skills, like um, not as super skilled. So you realize that there's a lot of blurring, a lot of feeling. It's kind of painterly. But as we move along, now this I shouldn't show you this one yet. I should just go right up here. This is when I started getting really, really good at that. Like yes. pulling people out. And so you, yeah, River Six, yes, this one um, was, was commissioned by Small Axe. Um, no, by, by Andy Warhol Foundation. But these four images I'm gonna show you now. And so that was done for Small Axe Magazine. Um, 
And so this is when you could tell now I started going a lot more detail. These things, these would take a lot longer to do, like uh, to, to, to complete a work like this. In fact, this entire thing, these entire four images took me the editing time, not the shooting. The shooting is not as bad. The shooting will take like maybe a week um, every day doing stuff, like shooting models, different models, looking at what I have, fixing people in poses, giving me many options to find the ones I want to them because I'll, every single person is just layered. You're talking about hundreds of layers um, in Photoshop. So imagine like if you're going to practically cut out images, you're layering um, uh, um, those images over each other. That's kind of like what it is. So, um, and the boat's built um, to scale, well, almost to scale and a lot of um, manipulation done, you know, get wardrobe involved, that kind of stuff. So it's getting better now, you can tell. And then of course, here we go. And by the way, that's also when, when you have a little money to spend, so <laughs> you can tell everything before no money there's no money no clothes no money <laughs> so, <laughs> so so that's what happened now and then of course right here um that's also one of them so this also has a lot more detail I spend more time doing this thing but as like i said to you as time progressed i got even better um uh so all like there's a lot of seamless putting of images together but you wouldn't even know uh, 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 uh so wait back to did I do that one i showed that one already and i showed this one same same vibes here same same kind of concept all right this one would have been like what it, it, it got to like where this is the birth of venus this one is like like even me like it took me four months it took me four months to do the four images before it took me four months to do this one every day. I remember, I remember like, like it was yesterday. The file size is so large that my computer, I don't shut it down and I don't close the file. Because if I close the file, it would take me like more than an hour to open it. Because mm -hmm. even though it was a Mac, Mac, iMac, it wasn't as fast as the stuff we have today. And even the stuff we have today would still struggle with the layers because we're talking about hundreds and they're large. So you can't see the full resolution of this, but this is, um, the, one of the things I've learned over time too, when you don't have, um, like, like um, you, you have to work with what you got, right? And, and I think, um, so I'm gonna speed along because the rest of stuff is, is easy to talk about because this shows the trend, it shows what you're talking about, um, Zaka, where I'm coming from and how I built up. The rest is just like fashion, there's no depth um, in terms of, there's not a lot of depth to it. Fashion is all about clothes, I'll show you. So you can still see my fashion, um, um, a background coming out in some of the things that I do and the way fabric moves and so forth. So this, if I zoom in, well, it's hard to see. All of these are layers. The tree isn't there. That's that's me sitting down and move, removing every white dot, every sky from the tree. You can see the other sky behind it. And it takes, like I said to you, about four months to do all of that. Every single thing manipulates. So when you see the print, the print's about 12 feet across. So it's a 12 foot print. Um, that but it's done to scale so it's 12 foot but the actual canvas and photoshop is 12 foot so that's how i that's how I, I did it so um so like so that's what i want to show you and that part let me just hop over to here now and show you like what what that also so while whilst doing those works i was also doing fashion photography and i remember this is where i started so one of the things um zaka ta uh, taught me is it's just to be rounded like be very, very rounded, um, be able to do like she did portraits, she did landscapes, she did this, because if you're a photographer, you're a photographer, light is light, you're, you're playing with light, you're playing with subjects and light, and so, and composition, so it doesn't really change, I know some folks say, well, I'm not good with people, yeah, but you can be, like, just practice, just have fun, because it's, I, that's what I did, photography was fun for me, by the way, um, you will not see any commercial projects, I apologize, because that was not fun for me, there is no commercial project that I actually care to show, even though I did a lot, because there's 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 something about it. I didn't upload anything, Zaka, for commercial because I have no love for it. In fact, I no longer do it. Heads up, I no longer do commercial. I, that's why I'm in a suit. I'm did a different business, so I don't have to do commercial photography. So, all right, this is me coming from a from a time that I had no lights. This is like one of my early um, photos. And so we had working with the stylists and the makeup arts and so forth. And th they were finished shooting and the girl took up a mango and started eating. And I look around and I go, stop, 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 hold it. And that shot, I absolutely love it. Like, 
like you look at this this is a shot that's you know done wait, wait let me let me i try to zoom out but i don't know how to do it okay let me try it this way so this is so this shot um is you can tell it's composed she's prepared for it and so forth and you can tell but i just like this because it just so this is like the cover there and and so this has no 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 artificial lighting this is just sunlight and a, and a little reflector okay that's all i had so i work with what i have and then this is when i started having like a one light and a, and and uh or two lights and i you know start experimenting and and then as time progressed i started doing more stuff these are just random let me just come off of this one second yeah one second just coming out from that so so um this this would probably have a, a mixture of stuff but i want to stay there let me so let me go back to the main page but 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 some of my earlier works um because i practice so much like i practice a lot um some of these works they're way earlier they're like 2000 and like right out of college and um and and, and for example this is 2010 um this is a a a a, a shoot we did um for a magazine in fact we did it and then and by the way that's something you could consider doing as well is um do the shoot and then then find magazines that are are because public like, it, it, publications matter if you can get stuff published it really helps you like on another level and that's what we did like look at what you have you don't have to get paid for pub uh, because most of these works i've never gotten one dime for um most of what you're seeing i didn't get anything for but it opens the door for you to get paid from companies that actually value what you are what what what, what you have done but they can't value what you've done unless you have published stuff unless other people care for what you've done so you put together some stuff and um and so that's what i did with this work with the stylist and the, and the, and um, and just went down to Montego Bay, did a shoot with this young lady because we knew she's from germany she modeled and she wasn't gonna be here anymore so we just um said all right let's just, just use our own time own dime get down there and do it i don't know what's happening oh yeah there and so we did a shoot and you know that that, that paid off because it got published um in a, in a magazine called jamique and uh and then um that opened doors for like me working with um she carbon magazine and that was paid you know so i did this stuff for called romanian express for um for with, with romanian designer uh and and so i started working with some of the bigger models that they have because this girl was one of the bigger models they had at the time girls no um so that those are some of the things we did and with you know there's a budget for that so you're able to have you know good location kind of sandals in um ultra race and so these are some of the things that you'll see and then um just i'm not going to go through everything i just want to find some just a couple of key things i want to point out again and then um like i said to you the same skills that you have they still translate anyway so it's not a it's not like a disconnect so what you, you saw me doing as a commercial um, sorry, as a, a fine art photographer, still translates. Here we go. This I did with a, a stylist um, that just wanted an African theme. So I still do the same manipulation. Went down to St. Thomas by a beach. I, I told her, you don't have to go to St. Thomas by a beach. She said, why? Because I could shoot this anywhere. But, but you know, she insisted because she, she never understood, like, what I mean. Because you're not going to see the beach if you want to see the fire and get, you know, like, it, it would be too much to, to have because you have to know how to pull back and, you know, like you taught me those things to Zaka where, you know, like um, how to really like make the subject stand out. And sometimes if there's too many things happening. So so that's why I was telling her, you're not going to see the beach because I don't want you to see it. Because if you see the beach, it's not about the subject anymore. It's about the beach. And and so I want and so I, I thought this worked out pretty well. Um, did the shoot, had the drum set on fire and added more fire. Um, by the way, that's one of the things you could learn to do, like. Um, what I would do is light the fire. You know, you can't get as much fire from this, uh, from a drum like this. So you go and take pictures of the fire and, and then add it afterwards. And But stuff that can be done pretty easily now, you know, with um, with where Photoshop has gone. Um, and uh, like stuff like those. Yeah, I absolutely love this one. I think you'll probably like this, Zaka. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, so stuff like those. It's, it's, uh, it was fun. It was fun doing these things. And like I said to you, not, most of these things aren't, there's no money involved in that, none. Um, of course, other things I've done too over time, um, I'll show you um, just two more after this. Um, before I show you, um, before I show you the, the video project, I won't, I won't spend time on it. I just wanted to at least see a couple of things, but 
all right let me let me go all the way down here so i be, i did some stuff with ty flora um uh some time ago so the first shoot I ever did with ty flora hello. is um hello kiddo but you can't come here here daddy's on a meeting go 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 on all right why are you guys wearing swims this don't make any sense my daughters are in swim swim swimsuit where are they going i don't know <laughs> so anyway <laughs> so this this right here is that the first photo shoot i did for them and uh, of course that was done in studio and then you know like these are some of the images from it and you know and then the next one was location I went down portland and shot by the uh, i can't remember the castle that's there i was shot there did these which i like a lot more than the studio stuff so much more because it just feels better it feels real and you know that was one of the shots as well um and you know just learning to frame stuff all lines I, I see things in lines and and shapes and and fashion is not complicated because fashion is all about clothes and, and so I, I, that's most people don't get that part but it's about the clothes it's not about how pretty the model is that's cool too but how does the clothes look how does what you know and and so um there it is some manipulation using my skills again adding more flowers taking out the studio that kind of stuff but then this was would have been the last shoot i did with them which was a few years later and that's how fast you can develop when, but this is way better than what you, you saw here, even though you might like this more, I don't know. In terms of just how I edit, it's it's almost flawless. And it's not, if you saw the actual file, you'll still see skin pores. Cause something like this would take me probably about four hours to to, to, to edit. Uh, I, I, I actually like doing those things and yeah. And uh, that's what that is. All right, I'll show you. Um, one more sorry two more in terms of manipulation like taking the skill set and passing it through this is one this is called playground this got published in um i don't remember the name of the magazine I've, I've, but this one is one of my um was one of my, my my favorite um fashion photography because it reminds me so much of what i did with fine art and uh, of course called playground um and uh and so we did that shot in studio i went shot the fire so i this is not no like let me take this stuff off of off, off, um, the internet and then add to it. No, every single thing you see in an image is mine. I take every single image. And I, there's nothing wrong with taking other people and reappropriating. I'm cool with that. But I just feel better. And I feel like I've done work if I actually go in and take pictures of everything and then put it and compose it together. So the sky, the, the fire, the smoke, all this, even the smoke I've taken pictures of. Um, so you take a picture of smoke against black and then eliminate the black so you can actually use the smoke, that kind of stuff. Um, the, and, uh, and, and then the, the burnt out, uh, the debris you're looking at in the background, there's a place that got burnt out up, up Hope Road um, that I went to. And just, I, I, I know they were recording a cordon off and I went over there and took a ton of uh, uh, pictures, like a lot of pictures. So I could actually use it and arrange it how I wanted and rebuild spaces. And that's what I've done with this. Um, and the same thing here. And then I take a picture of old cars, like a junkyard, and then put the fire in it, so it looks like it. So that's that kind of stuff. So, you know, it, it's, um, that's what it is, yeah. And by the way, um, yes, manipulation is done afterwards. Like nobody looks like that. So kind of reshape people and those kind of things. So most of these things are lies. That's uh, so why I don't, <laughs> um, I am, I'm gonna be honest here, Zaka, the kind of photography that I see you do, I appreciate it so much more for like, for like, um, for seeing people for who they are. This is not about who they are. It's about who you want them to be. Flawless. That's, that's the thing about fashion photography. So that's why you see things looking so, no, I can't, for baby girl, no, not no, here. Love you. I stopped putting on more. Finish. Thanks. Swimsuit on swimsuit now. So, all right, enough for that one. Last one. And last one that also took me some time to do and also got published is Icarus. Um, I like this one because this one, this one also is quite like this is it, it, if I end up just doing um, fashion photography alone, this is what this is the type of stuff I'd want to do. This is what I wish I got paid to do and I would still be doing it and showing you all the stuff. But I did mainly album covers and and lots of work for companies like Digicel and New York Times and just lots of those boring stuff. Um, it's boring for me because 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 it's you're not the one like determining what 
is shot and how it's shot sometimes yeah, you're told what they want and i like to just do what i want want to do i mean like you know like who doesn't want to have that kind of freedom you know so this is a company so this is shot in studio so we shot shot and by the way when i say shot in studio I don't mean in studio i used to be in this little matches box apartment throw the backdrop up against the wall i don't know if you remember where i used to live when i used to live on drumbler um zaka that was one tiny place and i make it work put on it and the lights you just make it work whatever circumstance whatever camera you have um by the way don't run down technology that side note just don't run down technology you're wasting your money you know i i'm i'm I've, I've I've shot with the same camera for the last. What is it? What, which year are we now? 2023? I've been doing like four. Um, huh? 2024. Four. So <laughs> <laughs> what? So I have a camera that's about 11 years old that I'm still using. <laughs> I have a new one. I have another one that I use for video. But I have a, a camera that's 11 years. I'm I'm not kidding you. Like you can't tell me like you please convince me like show me how like these work by the way these work you're looking at is shot with an inferior camera to the one that i have now it was shot with a camera that was 21 megapixel this one is 36 i just i don't know i just think use it stuff until you till it dead you know <laughs> like am i wrong for saying that i so, agree <laughs> don't, waste money. don't waste your money i use laptops until they're dead unless they can do what I want them to do anymore, you know? Um, but these are some of the things I did. Uh, lots of iteration. Uh, this is like um, trial and error. You know, like when you do, you develop many, con like your, uh, when you're doing the black and white um, stuff, um, um, uh, uh, done it, and we talk about like um, doing like multiple tests just to see how it would, like what exposure you're looking for. That's the same, same approach. Like mm -hmm. what you're looking at, there was blue sky at one point, then there was like slightly gray sky and dark. That's, that's, that's a lot of iterations just to find what works and manipulation, seeing how fabric f flows. And But this is called Icarus because if you guys know the story, Icarus, he actually flew too high to the sun and his wax wing melted. And it felt, so that's the, that's that Greek mythology. And I actually like just being able to do these kind of things. And, wow. just, you know, so, so that's that last thing I want to show you is this i i i even so the so if you want to see what i have done commercially you will be able to see something that i do for myself now so we have a different business that we end up building and so with team because i want to help them to generate more sales more um customers i i i, I make the time um and by the way if you really want to accomplish like some amazing stuff it's going to take a team. Most of the stuff you're seeing, I'm doing, or you seen down here, is not, I, I alone couldn't do it. I'm not a stylist. I could, but I wouldn't be as good. So I, I team up with people that know how to do that and I work with them. And, I, you know, and, and, and sometimes most people don't say this work with people when they just start out, you know, um, because they're willing to do it. Because when they, when they get more established, they're not willing to. It's, they're harder to want to do anything um, with you unless you're paying them. And so I like working with newbies and seeing how you can all grow together. And that's what I did. So I work with a lot of stylists and, and makeup artists and, you know, just um, people that build sets and pe people that make clothes. And I just I, I find ways and I share and I say, hey, let's do something together. And, and you know, it's all free stuff until we all can just build like a, a team. And so I have a lot of people I've worked with. So I've done the same thing here. I taught people how to do video production. So I'll show you. So for motion, um, I'm not gonna play. It. I'm just gonna kind of give you a what do you call it like a like a snippet of. Um, so we do these. Um, so I'll go with the expo. So you can see like like video. Uh, by the way, I, I wanted to say this. I don't know where you guys are at on this one. Like I can probably have like 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 five minutes tops, and I'm done. All right. Um, and and uh, thanks so much, um, and Marie. Thanks for your patience and everybody else <laughs> so um so so there, 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 so what what i what we did is we did these videos but 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 the thing is you you'll still see that like for example we consider you know working with makeup artists stylists um and we still have a set that's been done up and you know seeking location and those kind of just the same way photography videos photography in motion so that's why I actually started embracing that too. And everything you see here, like I've edited these things as well, learn to edit. 
Um, by the way, heads up, I was never an editor. It took, it, uh, the last three years, uh, three years ago is when I really started learning. And now these are some of the things I'm doing. So I won't play all this, but I kind of just play a piece of it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chevanese, and I'm here to talk about our artistry skincare line. The targeted skincare line made with you in mind. Men, looking to simplify your skincare routine? This is it. Throw those bar soaps away and step up your game. You deserve great skin too. The four-step system of cleansing, hydrating, right, toning so in, anti-aging formulations so I'm just gonna feature talk an exclusive dual-face dermosync complex to target both oil control and moisture. So here's what's happening, right? Zen and um, you're going to see, like, you see all these videos, uh, these things you're seeing, mind. images of the products. I've also shot those, too. But the thing is, I don't have that fancy background. Make like I don't have, I don't know where to go CBD to do that kind of setup so where it's more. control where I could do lighting fact, and it comes off really nice and you know like the nicer place you have to pay glow. for and so forth. We're talking about I just use a TV booster, spritzer, and I get backgrounds or shoot backgrounds or, or, or get backgrounds that would blur and then put the, the, the yes, products in front of the TV and then shoot. Did so I you, the it just, you get what you want always. This has you know what I mean? Not just so we're shooting one, dead at night and we don't have to be rushing and in heat and all these kind of stuff. So we find ways to be creative so same, same way. On your skin with all right. Luxury but um, enough of for that one. And uh, you'll see and renews TV in the background again. Act up to one sec. Years younger. Wow. I'm, pause this now. I'm talking about oh. Supreme Alex okay. with a blend of the... One second, guys. So you look at this, for example similar and i'm gonna show you the, the, the one down here as well just so tv in the background products on a table by you know that fake grass what do you call it astroturf hi we're the freaks and create we're gonna sets. start you off with our neutralite and and um supplements. and by the way what? also coach because people on how to on talk um uh, let me turn this down a little bit i feel like it's competing so we coach people on how to like how to share stuff expressive and, and, and that's what i like about like working with people and also like like learning like like how things are done you yourself also if you could play the role you yeah, sorry if you had to be the talent you could so we're we're we're, we're directing shooting you know um listing for the flaws looking for this the minor things people think looking for things that fall out of place um all of this again like i said to you is um is tv in the background not with the people that's green screen so i do green screen and um um or blue screen uh depending and so this is what we do uh, and so i mean if i even pause that kind of shot you realize how like you know how we think about you know composition and all these kind of stuff so you use the light from the television in the background in the back so this what so you're, you're seeing in the background is the is tv the yes but the lighting, I have lights. Oh, I have continuous oh, lights. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I bought some, I bought some, and by the way, stop spending a bag of money, please. Um, I bought some cheap lights <laughs> to, to use. Cheap lights, why would I spend money on something I'm not doing commercially for, for money? You mm. know, it's not paying for it, you know? So last one, I'll, sh um, I'll show you right here because the rest of them are kind of similar. So I'll just, I'll show you this one. This one was shot on location. And so sometimes you can find a nice spot. So our friends, they, they this is their place. This is where they were renting. And so we say, let's just do a quick shot there. And so in the kitchen, so we utilize that. And recycle shots to us. Hello, everyone. My name is Vanessa, and I'm excited to share with you a really amazing. And I, I think you can probably like tell the lighting and all those kind of stuff, and you know, having two angles so people don't get bored to that. that um and just switching back and forth and you know putting on what they're talking about visual but 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 you can tell just look you look at just how it's lit if i pause the shot you can tell there is consideration for 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 um for everything so that's where i'm at now um i do motion i do i do motion um really and also um also fun stuff too like um like 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 lots of green screen fun Christmassy type stuff. Um, we do those things too. Uh, so, so like when we're doing like, um, let me show you this real fast. And how stressful. So one sec. 
so things like this where we're showcasing stuff for Christmas and whatever it is and Father's Day, Mother's Day. So I just utilize my skills and just do that. So that's pretty much what I um, second, what I wanted to to show you guys. I don't I don't know what Zach, am I am I good? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, thank you so much for your patience. You are talented. Appreciate. And you just share with us how much you've explored. I see the art in that. Um, it goes with practice. And you yeah. want to be able to explore a lot of things. You started with art. Mm. And all of that graphics, you had to teach yourself. Yeah. I couldn't teach you all of that graphics. I still don't know. <laughs> it. But you want to do it. You know, you want to do it. Uh, I think that you have done very well for us. You have done well commercially too. I never know you never liked it that much. No, I never loved it. No, it was it was soul sucking. But you were being paid. I know, but but you I'm being paid somewhere else. You are probably one of the now. better persons. I, I'm being paid somewhere else because I decided to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Happy oh my gosh, what's happening here? Say hi. Just say hi because I know hi. they're gonna want to say hi. Hi, Shemini. Yes, that's Shemini. <laughs> Uh, it's not your video. <laughs> the one with you in it. Now, artistry. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you so much. Uh, Marvin, can I ask a question? Um, sure. In those products that you show, which are coming from like a TV commercial, you know, oh, because, fine. yeah, are you, I mean, you don't show it, I mean, normally because you would have to get consent from the product line in order to use their product? Or is it that you are in contact with these people before, like when you want to take some products in okay. order to use their thing? In order to use? Yes. No, no. You know, most, most companies don't care. Um, most companies don't care. If you, wanna, if you wanna do stuff like with products and have fun with it, no, most companies don't care. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's a, you can if you buy the product and you want to use the product, you know, as long as you're not, because um, the real and truly, you're not going to be using that to sell. You know, for for no. to make money from unless you're selling it back to them. You know, right. so they right. don't really care. It's a free promo for them, but this is different. The stuff you saw in the videos, yeah. that that's those are the products that that, that we have in our business. Okay. So we've been given the the the, the freedom to actually do that, okay. um, to produce those because typically people can't produce content and actually. Um, yeah, but but they've given us the go ahead to do that for this okay. market because nobody, uh, Caribbean right. market is different. People, okay. uh, Caribbean people like Caribbean people. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So, okay. But yes, if you want products to use, just use them. People, I don't think people care as much. They they're excited for free promo. Yeah. Okay, great. As long great. as it's not bad promo, like you have the products like stepping on it and those kind of stuff. Right. <laughs> you know they don't care. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Marvin, yes. do you continue to paint? Marvin is an excellent painter, by the way. Uh, I don't know what excellent, but no. <laughs> Marvin, Marvin, show some of your paintings. You have one or two. You, you know, don't can paint I tell anymore. You? I don't. I don't have anything to show. Nothing. I stopped painting a long time ago. The reason why, because um, I just learned this. I it, it, it's um, if you if you focus on too many different things, you you tend not to be good at any. And I realized I was. I, I had to focus on photography. Okay, so I focused primarily on photography and I realized that by doing that, I then realized that video, transitioning to video was like a no-brainer no because it's the same thing, just moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so me going to paint, you know, it's a different language. And if I like it, I'm just gonna get stuck. Like, like I'm not gonna be doing much. I, I don't wanna like too many things. You, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and that's the truth. I can sing, you know, you know I can actually sing. But, and, and, and when I used to work with the artists, they're like, yeah, you know, you should record it. I'm like, no, I'm taking your pictures. I like doing that, <laughs> you know? So, so that's why, um, no, yeah, I tried to do only a few things, a few things. Really appreciate you, Marvin. You have yes. certainly grown. And all the others who were with you too, they have done well. It was a good year. It was. Yes. It was a good year. Yes. I agree. I agree. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your participation, Marvin. Um, I really, I really liked how 
you've shown the transfer or application of one style or genre onto another. So you, you went through that learning process for fine art photography, but you managed to bring some of those to affect how you capture your fashion um, images. I, mm -hmm. I really like that, like that transfer. I appreciate that. Um, I love that you brought up the fact that personal projects are key to your development and your progression. Um, yeah. A lot of us, we, we may not have that train of thought and not realize that we, we miss out on opportunities not trying to focus on, on projects. Yeah, uh, the the previous previous presenter also brought up um projects, so it's it's something that persons need to consider. I, I I I agree with you. I'm just adding this point to it. I actually, said this to somebody um recently because they 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 have this art. So this is what they do. Whenever they're whenever they're doing something, they shortchange it. If it's not, like they don't work for free. That's one. Um, and I think everybody should still, I don't think you can, you, you're too big to work for free. Go do something for, for fun. Doing stuff for fun is typically when you're doing it for free, right? Um, uh, but the thing is, this sort of person, so they don't work for free, but they also don't give more in value than they receive in cash payment, which blows my mind because the same energy I give to somebody that's just paying me when I remember, um, even if I'm doing them a favor, the same energy I give to them, the same setup with lights and whatever it takes, the same thing, the same tiredness when I'm done that I give to um, them, um, uh, when I'm done, the same energy I give to them is the same thing I'll do for a major commercial project. Why? Because my brain works like this. If, if I give everything here and I give everything there, it's just who I am. It, it's like, it, it's more about me and less about, you know, like, I, I want to be. I want to. I want to give my best every single time. Right. That's what and 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 if you shortchange in one area, you you gonna shortchange eventually, now, and you'll never really. And then also, it's your work. It's gonna represent you. So I say, just go hard. Yeah. Yep. Uh, creative effort, effort should be the same, no matter who you're dealing with. That's it, because it's your work. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing that came out of both of your presentation is that you. You need to have that curious mind. You need to be hungry to learn. Um, you need to always be experimental and actively working on developing your skills. Um, so whether it's the skill in photography, the skill in editing, um, you mentioned the set design as well. We, we might not be able to do everything but have an idea and then have other persons with more experience to help us or to guide us. Yeah, uh, that's I really appreciate. It. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, thank you for having you. me. <laughs> no problem. Love you, bro. Love you too, darn it. I think you have me on spotlight still. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So as I said, most, both persons brought up the, the point of personal projects. And that's something that we want to encourage your members to try for this year. Um, so we're hoping that between now and say March, persons can think of topics that they could work on. So at the end of the year, well, not necessarily end of the year, based on the timeline that you've given yourself to complete the project, you can present or uh, make a presentation um, about that topic and uh, even get featured as blog posts on the website. But the main thing is for you to exercise the, the development process to um, test your ideation to execution. Uh, <clears throat> as a part of that process, 
we would like for persons to add some formality to the to the personal project. So I'll ask Sherard to just describe what is expected for those personal projects, preparing and and presentation. Sure. I don't think he's in the meeting. Yeah, yeah, but he's muted. Step away. Mezaka, will you be able to fill in? Oh, excuse me. Um. Ah, uh, you want me to say something about what did you say? Would it uh, would you be able to fill in for Gerard? Okay. Just describing okay. what what would be expected from the personal projects. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 analyzing dissecting thoughts. So for example, we think about a subject matter that is near and dear to us. Um, something like, I remember Sherry Ann did boys in the ghetto or boys in the gully or something like that. But something that is provocative, something that is cultural or personal, but something that we can take apart and analyze. Uh, telling stories start from A to Z. And we want to be able to take, let's say a subject like um, Tanayoyad. Tanayoyad begins with COVID and we want to say what COVID is. Then we want to say the effects of COVID. Uh, why is it important? Why were we asked to stay home? And then we get into the feelings of people. Why is this guy behaving in this way? Why is this woman so mad with our children? That kind of thing. How do you feel about taking apart a subject matter and creating one image after another to tell that story? It's not difficult to do. But you have to understand the subject you have chosen and you have to work it out a step at a time. Basically. Um, and there are lots of series about. If you look in art books or on art sites, um, artists using photography as process, you can learn from those. It's not hard. It must have details, drama, um, intrigue. You want to encourage your audience, your viewers to continue searching, pretty much like reading a book. So you could tell a, a story in eight or 10 parts. When we have exhibitions, we try to work up to 30 parts. So each shot is in the series, is in the part of telling the story line by line. So you choose a, a, a topic, you analyze the topic, and you start to dissect. You find a little square and you work on it. You work on it to the end, basically. Okay. Could you also speak to the, the artist statement and the other preparations that would be needed to do that presentation? Um. What did I just, I am going to be working on what's left of the wattle and red earth houses in Jamaica. First of all, I have to say why I need to do it or why this group of people need to do it. Why we need to do it. Then we need to say what it is. 
when it existed, um, what sets of people were responsible for it being here in Jamaica? How long did the materials last? Um, how, how are the materials used in proportion? How thick were the walls? Things like that. So you take the project, you analyze in little bits and pieces what you have to look at. It's like archaeology. So you dig a hole, you find a piece, you have somebody help you to analyze it, you measure it, you weigh it, you find the color of it, you say, oh, you know, the size of it, that kind of thing. You want to analyze step by step what you are attempting to do. When, they, when your viewer comes into the room and reads that, they continue, did this artist get this right? Is this what he's talking about? So you're actually measuring what you're doing physically in terms of imagery to what you have written or what you're about to say. It's, it's not so difficult. If you understand the process you've undertaken, it's not going to be difficult. Just find a topic, make sure you understand what it means, start at the beginning and have a nice ending. So you're going through drama, you're going through lights and shades, you're going through textures, you're going through colors. A little bit of your imagination if you're a fine artist. You construct. So Marvin, use those people over and over and over again. If you're not looking, you won't see where they're repeated. But it tells a story. You know? Um, it's pretty much like writing a piece of poetry. It's the same kind of thing, but in words. From beginning to end. Yeah, basically. So, in other words, Ms. Zaka, the writing must relate um, to the photography. Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah, or the images must relate to what you've written, either way. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I am looking okay. at this picture in the background, and this is from a series. And we're talking, I was talking about Brother Man. The, the importance of the Rastafarian culture as a revivalist form, as revivalism. Um, Rastafarianism is a mixture of something out of Africa with Christianity. And who are these guys? Why do they choose to wear tams and not cut their hair? Why do they live the way they live? The artist statement had to be constructed like that. So if you come into the room, you would try and understand what, what I was trying to do, what, what I was trying to say. I was taking a little piece of, our, a piece of our culture so that you, the viewers, could understand what it was about. And I spoke to that in images. It's just doing a series, a number of different things in a line to tell a story, basically. But you have to do some research if your topic is big. So, for example, if you want to say something about Black Lives Matter, who are the people involved with Black, black Lives? What's the history of, 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 of Black people in this country or anywhere? You know, why are they important now? Why are we looking at their lives now? How would we photograph them? How do we see Black people every day? Are they always poor? You know, you ask all of those relevant questions. And then you try to construct your photographic images around them. So some, um, a lot of times you're making the picture in art. You're making it. Um, can it stem, can it be like a personal project? Like say you're writing an autobiography, something personal coming from childhood. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. So, right, so you would, how would you want to do it? Would you like to get a child to pose? Are you just going to construct out of using dolls? Um, you have to think about how you want to create the images. Because you can use yourself as a child at two or six or seven. 
it's like talking about abuse. Abuse, abuse always have to do with, a lot of times it, it has to do with girls. How would you speak to that? You can't have, have a man having intercourse with a young girl, a 50-year-old man having intercourse with a 15-year-old girl. But you can find things to represent. Maybe by using dolls, maybe by using clothing, um, things that are feminine, panties, brassiers, and so on. And you can work your ideas around that. Okay. So you, you construct, you create, you imagine. And you put all of those things together. Photograph them in a way that they can speak to your audience. So depending on the project, you might have to do some uh, symbolism. Yes, yes. A lot of times you have things have to be symbolic. Look at those things that Marvin did. He just told you the story. The two last pieces, I think. Um, this person, what did he do? Throw something to the sky and it became smoke or water or something, remember? No, no, man. Yeah. It's um, Icarus. Is that huh? Yeah, tell me the story of that. The okay. story of Icarus is, is um, it, it, like he, 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 he had wings. Um, uh, made from the wings were made of wax, and so of course he was flying. But he just felt, I guess, it's it's that story about really ego. Like he fly, he he, he was flying, but he just started flying too high, and so he right. Flew, so he like flew into sun. the warmth, and then he just melted. It melted the wax, and he right. fell from the sky. Yeah, Symbolism. So it's just a different way of representing within fashion now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Things like that. You really have to think it all. But they, we have loads of references on, on the internet these days. You can you can always look at. Sorry, done it? Yes. The same thing you just meant about you, you have me here. <laughs> while you were talking, I was I was drawing out something while you were talking because you mentioned Tanaya Yad. And yeah. uh, it's interesting because I think that's a really powerful topic. So I was actually like doing up some squares saying, okay, what would I look like? Um, because like the first thing I was thinking about, like what if you could, what if you themed something where all the different images, of course, people home, but it's, it's, you're speaking more to what the mental anguish and what people went through during that mm -hmm. time, being locked in, forced to stay in, like people getting fat. If you had people somebody that fat. was really <laughs> obese, sitting down in front of the TV with a whole heap of food, that's one picture. The other one where somebody's like, yeah, man, somebody looking depressed, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, because they're forced to be locked in a space with somebody they don't like, you know, or they don't, they never knew they never liked. That kind of stuff because it, it you know there's so there's there's like multiple images that could come out of that people get yeah. nasty yes and so people get lazy that. they don't want to wake up they may wash them clothes them it's exactly. a lot exactly so you lot. could have a pile of dirty clothes with somebody and they just don't care that's it you mm -hmm. know care not fix they look dirty that kind of stuff you know just but different images that represent however you look at the lockdown maybe some people thought the lockdown was great you know they get to rest and look peaceful and all this stuff. You know, whatever. Yeah, Mar Marcel said people were also at peace. People were what? Also at peace. Oh, okay. <laughs> there is that. So, that was it. Then the after effects. Some people still want to be in lockdown. A lot yeah. of people don't want to go back to being normal. Hmm. They have that. So it's a matter of analyzing and, and figuring out how best you can tell this story in a sequence. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Ms. Zucker. Let's, let's see how many persons take up the challenge uh, for these personal projects. When do you guys, when do you, when, when do you guys, do, when do you guys want to have that done for? Uh, so we're hoping that persons would uh, be completed by September. So they start in now. Want to give persons up to March to choose a topic, and then between uh, uh, mid March up to September, persons can work on and deliver. So if if persons think that they can take April and finish their project, they can finish and come and present. I mean, <laughs> I want to do it. All right, good, good. 
Oh, they yeah. did. Yes. I loved it. Yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah All right. Good. What a fun evening. Thanks to everyone for turning up. Thanks to our presenters. It was it was a wealth of knowledge here. And hope hope to see you um at other sessions to impart some or all of what you've learned. All right, thanks everyone and have a good, a good rest of the evening. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, good night. Thank you. Good night, good night, night, night all. Night, night all. Night.